I'm not going to. You could, you're more, you could come look at my screen. You walked by it multiple times. Why would times. I do? I want to get ice. Ruins the, the only of reason the I know she and I refuse recording. to break the wall. I, like, oh yeah, hey, by the way, Brody, recording, so it's gonna totally shift we'll the dynamics do, of the We'll just discussion. do like a hand signal. That's it's still the same thing. Just wave me. <laughs> no. No, the only reason I would start recording is because look, I'm fortunate enough to sit beside her. If I was still in my corner, I would not know. Yeah. But You're like, fortunate enough. To but sit like, next if you're a director me. on a movie, you don't just like say, okay, whenever you feel like you say action or something like that. Yeah, we're not on a movie set. I always ask for forgiveness later, and it usually <laughs> works out for me. No, oh, it will not today. You <laughs> shall never be forgiven for the sins you have commenced on this podcast. I literally episode. do it every day. <laughs> we record <laughs> once a week. <laughs> once a week, we have every this day. Just what are you doing? I don't know. You keep going and doing what you're doing until somebody says something. <laughs> yeah, really. Just act natural. Act natural, man. Mm -hmm. Shit sells that way. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Start the episode. <laughs> what are we talking about today? And who are we? And what's going on? <laughs> A what lot are we of drinking? questions. Uh, let's answer one of them. This is one frame off, baby. Hi. Hey, you're three best friends talking about movies and My TVs name is and stuff. <laughs> It's like, I am not a best friend. My name is Rose. Okay. We're casual acquaintances at best. At no, best. I thought you said you were, I thought you were going to be done after like your three best friends. And I was going to go with, my name is Rose. You gotta, you gotta let Brody like mull it over and like seek it out a little bit. I like to speak in paragraphs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I like to speak in short punctuated sentences. <laughs> is that so? No, but I definitely text that way. You all know that. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. you do. I don't text paragraphs. I text you like 18 sentences. I will do that if you ignore me. No, like, it's, it's literally like how I speak and think. I think you guys know me, so it's yeah. not weird, but it's probably overwhelming if you don't know me. Look, if I want your attention, I will get it one way or another, no matter how pissed off or annoyed you will be with me. And that's a threat. Like, if you ignore me to the extent where I'm either calling you or constantly texting you, <laughs> you will pick up the phone on the 30th time I called you. You will pick up the phone. <laughs> you will. Because no, you'll be, you will be so won't. done. I you will be so will done. Not. Jess, you will be done with hearing me call you constantly. Literally like, oh, hi, blah, 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 number, it cannot come to the phone. End the call, restart it. End the call, restart it literally for an hour. <laughs> I'm Brody. <laughs> and I'm Jess. I think... I think Rose said that already. <laughs> I don't know. Context clues. You could probably pick it up by now. You, you'll figure it out. What are we talking about today? I don't know, Jess. What are we talking about today? Bars! <laughs> These bars. Bars? Real life bars? We're rapping. <laughs> I am not rapping. Um, we are talking about our favorite or most interesting that we could think of. <laughs> Bar yeah. <laughs> in movies, video games, TV, what have you. Bars, pubs, clubs, casual drinking holes. Yeah. A lot of movies and TV shows try to like use them as a setting for like some sort of like, you know, characters meeting up with each other or something like that. Where all the characters meet together to discuss problems and yeah. get on one central plot line together. Yeah. Kind of like... I don't know. Cheers, like the Bullfinch Pub in Cheers, or what was the one in uh, It's Always Sunny? Oh, Patty's, Patty's. Pub? Patty's. Oh, you yeah. see, Patty's is different than those because <laughs> Patty's is just a reason for them to have free time, not really a place to meet up. Sort of little column A, little column B. Their yeah. life is Patty's, and Patty's is trashy. Yeah. <laughs> so what are our that... columns? Did we talk about that? Oh, yeah, we kind of just wanted to talk about, like, three different uh, categories of bar that we see in fiction. We okay. got the classy ones, we got the trashy ones, and we got the ones that are out there. Yeah. The ones that you wouldn't see naturally. No. Hmm. Before we get to bars, let's get to drinks. What are we drinking, y'all? I am. I'm, I found a really old ass cold mountain in the back of my fridge, and I gotta tell you, it's, it's really good. <laughs> it's really good. It's been in there the whole time. It's delicious. Thank you, Highland Brewing. Very wintry. <laughs> I was drinking an Ace High. Another Ace High. Yep. You know what you like? I do. I'm back on whiskey. Oh yeah. What do you got today? 
I got... What the fuck is this? <laughs> High West Whiskey, American Prairie Bourbon. I liked it better when you said the brewery was... What the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. They got a little bit of... What the fuck? A little something, something. Anyway. Something, something. So, like, how do you guys want to go through this? Do... We all know which ones we wanted to talk about individually, but we do have a whole list here. That's true. I have an idea. So we'll start with Brody. Yeah. Uh, Did we each pick two? How many did we all pick? Ooh, that's good. That aren't honorable mentions. Let's pick like one main one we want to talk about from each category and we can just scatter around. Heard. Okay, so uh, let's just start with the categories. We've we've already put them all on lists Mm -hmm. and let's just mutually discuss them. I like that. Yeah. Way better. So what's something classy? Mm, okay, so the first thing that came to my mind for that was uh, the Ink and Paint Club. Oh, yeah. From uh, Roger, 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 Rabbit. Roger Rabbit. As a kid, I always thought that seemed like the fanciest place. In retrospect now, it was kind of trashy, but it's still nice. It's A lot of well-to-do people are there. Oh, it's pretty unique. I mean, like, was it? They got the octopus mixing drinks, and they got entertainment and all that. They've got, like, what, Donald and Daffy Duck playing dueling pianos. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then Jessica Rabbit puts on a performance. So it's, it's a classy establishment. Mm-hmm. Betty Boop selling cigars and cigarettes. If nothing else, like, the scene is worth showing up for. Yeah. yeah, agreed. Well, the whole movie is amazing. I feel like we've actually mentioned Who Framed Roger Rabbit in the last, like, two or three episodes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Couple times. Did you know there's a reason why Donald Duck and, uh... Daffy? Daffy Duck mm-hmm. a- appear in the same frame? I know, but... Ex- yeah, I don't. It tell me. Okay, so when they were filming the movie, it's actually one of the rarest times where we have a massive crossover between Warner Brothers and Disney. Right. So Warner Brothers is the producer, so they had all legal rights to any of the uh, Looney Tunes, but getting Disney to agree to borrow their characters for a film just like jam-packed with all these other cartoons, Mm. Disney said yes, but on the condition that um, two of our characters get the same amount of screen time as Bugs Bunny and uh, Donald Duck. Yeah, they didn't want uh, their competition having more screen time than them. So, to rectify it, both characters are always paired together. Right. So you'll see Mickey Mouse with um, bugs. bugs in every scene. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, well, to balance them out, Makes there sense. you go. Disney has always been pretty petty with their properties. Well, I understand it in this case, where it's like you're borrowing my characters, and like the movie is a very unique and pretty much like a very one-off movie like you won't have to be (laughs) no it could have it really didn't have to be no but like anthology and like toonville and yeah Mm -hmm. be great but to get the you know just to have that permission though is outstanding yeah it's a great scene regardless. It's a wonderful scene. It sounds petty no matter how you cut it, but like ultimately <laughs> this it, it yielded some gold. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Okay, so, so Ink and Paint Club, what's another classy establishment? Ooh, I got one. Uh, I've only seen this like a few times. Um, Harry Potter has like, everyone like always knows Hogsmeade as like being like the place. Mm-hmm. But like uh, in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the first one at least, uh, they got the blind pig speakeasy. Yeah, that one was cool. really cool. Yeah, very like nineteen twenties of them. Now, like like, it's all. I like the drinks too. Like they had like the the giggle water. Oh yeah. And yeah. what's the what's the what's the guy with the mustache? That actor, his character, the guy who oh. basically holds that movie up off by his own. Oh, oh God! You're talking about the Muggle. Yeah, 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 he's he's amazing. Holy shit! Uh, we just saw the third one, and um, the fight scenes were actually really great. Yeah, they they were super awesome, but All the right. plot was just like not enough. But he was great. Mm-hmm. Oh no, him and um, Eddie Rem. That's Eddie Redmayne. Redmayne and um. Uh, whatever. There's just like that, like really funny, like physical bit he does, where it's like he takes a sip of the giggle water. And then just give, has like a very forced laugh afterwards. It makes a return in the third film. Does it, it really? Yeah. It, it's just that funny. Yeah, no, it's just like he randomly takes a sip of it. He's behind the bar and mm-hmm. he takes a sip and everyone's having a very serious discussion and he just randomly starts giggling. Yeah. I, I'm just calling it now. Like a lot of my favorite like bars and clubs places from like all the movies and TVs we're talking about. I just really love the feeling of like 
speak easies or just like the idea of, especially in like a magical world where everything is hidden the idea that there's just this happy go lucky there's even bar. more hidden stuff oh yeah oh my gosh it was uh there was another one there that i actually did a little bit of research on uh what was it queenie she orders queenie. Gig- yeah she orders giggle water and something called the lobe blaster <laughs> And I, I saw, like, a video from How to Drink, that, that YouTube channel. He's mm-hmm. a cool guy. Uh, Lobe Blaster, in his mind, is gin, uh, blue carousel, slash uh, some butterfly pea flowers. I've seen that on TikTok. People use that to make, like, the blue tea. Oh. And then they squeeze lemon in it. Oh, okay. Purple. Look it up. Very satisfying. So, like, here's my thing is, um, I think speakeasies are aesthetically truly wonderful, but I can't drink many that many of co- those cocktails like that. Oh yeah, they always try to fancy them up too. Yeah, yeah. It, I I really just like kind of just want like a vodka soda. I mean, let's be honest. The real reason why speakeasies are a thing is because it's a gimmicky place that you can share on your Instagram story. Yeah, you can spend eighteen dollars on a whiskey. It's like, salad. hey, let's look into this. Let's uh, go to this laundromat, and there's a secret door there where they'll you'll pay a twenty dollars for an old. I fashion. would do a um bar that just opened up downtown a few months ago maybe like six months ago and uh it looks like a 1920 sanatorium it's amazing mm-hmm. cocktails are just all gin and like fucking elderflower and lavender and it's just <laughs> i like, love it i love elderflower though yeah yeah elderflower yeah, is amazing drink, i like herby it's, cocktails it's great I, i'm i'm telling you right now most of the people there were drinking draft beer and yep. like uh one and ones one quick honorable mention that i want to talk about is on the subject of speakeasies there's one episode in Ted Lasso where Coach Beard, he's out on the town for one night, and he goes to a church at the end, and then hears music, and then like below the church is like an actual like dance club. Nice. Mm. That seems like a good place for a, you know, dance club, especially that's- one with a big neon crucifix. Yeah, that's hilarious. Love Ted Lasso. Okay, so we did a classy. We did two classies. I don't have. A classy, I mean, I, I think the closest classy I will get is the the bar that's shown in Marvel's What If. Like, so it's Captain Carter's bar. Mm-hmm. So it's like the um, little pub area in London. I remember that, where they like assemble like the multiverse yeah, Avengers Yeah, and it's in. a reflection, basically an animated reflection of the pub that we see in Captain America, where, he's ta- where uh, Steve Rogers is talking to Peggy Carter and... Ooh. He, um, I didn't pick that up. His what is his friend? Uh, the Winter Bucky? Soldier, Bucky, like slams his hands on a, the car. Yeah, or the, it's like, the we window. stole a jeep. We stole a jeep. Yeah, it's like a reflection of that. I pretty didn't much. pick up on that. Yeah, That's a cool detail. So I mean, it's not classy, but it's it looks cool. It, it, it's Isn't it very also like floating in the middle of like a yeah? Void it's also or floating in like the middle of space because Doctor exclusive. Strange. Because it's like the Watcher needed a safe space, quote unquote, to bring everyone together. So he reaches out to Doctor Strange, who can see him, mm-hmm. and he's like, well, you've already basically fucked over your own universe, so let's uh, build the space where I can pull everybody safely over right. to here, and, and that's the, it, they just decided to make it Captain Carter's pub. So Nice. That also kind of reminds me, not like, you've seen My Hero Academia, right? Yes. Yeah. No. You know, like, there's, like, a little villain pub, like, Mm -hmm. downstairs. No one ever really uses it for anything. It's more just, like, a meetup. It kind of looks the same. Sort of, like, that wood and, like, orange lighting kind of thing. It's more of, like, a classic pub look. The rustic pub. It looks good. It's, like, one of those things where it's, like, you can just kind of be in there and kind of in the subject of it being in the void. Like, no windows. It's just, like, you're kind of alone in there kind of look. Yeah. That's kind of like also why I like speakeasies, where it's like, you don't know what time it is. You're trapped. In a good way. Yeah, I like dark bars, too. Mm-hmm. Minimal windows. There's one in uh, Chapel Hill that I liked. It's uh, Goodfellas. Yeah, Goodfellas is great. And, like, you literally just, like, go downstairs. It's, like, right in the middle, like, in an alleyway is, like, the entrance. You just Isn't go downstairs, there? and there's, like, a whole, like, karaoke section. And, like, they do dollar pickleback shots, which I think is fun. Isn't there a speakeasy in downtown? Like one in the library? Not one that I know of. No? I heard a while ago that there was one in like a private private library where you have to go talk to like someone behind the counter. That sounds mm-hmm. terrible. I'm not going to go there. 
Well, I mean, you have to walk through, like, a secret door. Like, you know how, like, s- spy style, they like, open the hatch? I've been to speakeasies. Oh, yeah. They're really not that fucking great. No? Mm-hmm. No. You're literally going to spend $15 on, like, an okay cocktail in a tiny fucking room, and you're going to be like, all right, let's go. You it's a rite that... of passage, though. No, it's like, I know the secret password. Like, no, I don't know. You think you would have more stuff. fun if speakeasies were, like, the only place where you could go and get a drink? Like, back in the 20s and 30s? I'd be more pissed off. You'd be more pissed off? Yeah. Was just if you like, had to oh, go I to a speakeasy? Trek out, go to, like, a bookstore, remember the password. And it would still be expensive. Come on. Yeah. Because yeah. liquor, I mean, you Especially you're paying, back then. Yeah. And it's all bad stuff. Like, it's like the cheapest made bathtub gin you can get your hands on. I was just going to say, on. yeah, bathtub gin. <laughs> good gin's good. Bad gin, bad. One hundred percent. Okay, so we did. That's classy. Classy. I got like a a big lump category for trashy. Yeah, because one I really want to talk about, and unfortunately, is definitely in the trashy category. Yeah. And that's gonna be Merlots from True Blood. I don't actually know anything about True Blood, despite you talking about it a lot on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I get I it. I picked up on it. But... Yeah. Um, I'm a very big fan of True Blood. At least the first three, maybe four seasons. It, it's it's way downhill, but it doesn't matter. I still really like. I still really <laughs> like it. Um, True Blood takes place in Bonton, Louisiana, and that's where Merlots is located. And it is owned by our resident neighborhood shapeshifter Sam Merlot. And all of our a lot of our main characters are employed there. It's a like a small diner, bar, and grill. Everybody goes there. <laughs> Everyone's there. You've got all your sassy, like, um, oh, waitresses. And the best part is always uh, Lafayette, may, may the actor who played in Rest in Peace. Uh, Lafayette uh, on the grill is one of my favorite characters. And they actually, I feel like they, like, the production designer really created, like, that looks like a bar in the town that I grew up in in Alabama. Mm-hmm. Like, they created such a tangible set. And with the cast there, it actually really seems like a place you would want to hang out. Yeah. But it is a total shit bar. Is it, like, divey at all, or is it... Super divey with, like, burgers and fries. Okay. Yeah. It's like a like a family grill and a bar. I can get behind that. You think, like, a... I always see that, like, with, like, set designers who's, like, they know exactly which lighting is used in, like, back of house and stuff like that. Like, the, they executed it so fucking perfectly. And it's a huge set piece in the show. Mm-hmm. It, it's where everybody encounters a vampire for the first time in Bond's Hall because he comes in to get a true blood, uh, which is a uh, synthetic oh, that's blood. that's why it's called that. Yeah. It's a synthetic blood that allowed vampires to come out of the coffin publicly so they're existing as like a their own political party in the United States, yada yada yada. So it's like like a like a faking kind of thing. Did they actually say what that what True Blood is? Uh, they might have. Is it just like a bunch of chemicals? Put it's together? not. It, it, no, yeah, it's just synthetic blood. It's like it's synthetic blood, and mm. they can do it by type too. So like, if like uh, they know like oh, I prefer type O. I kind of like. They heat it up in the microwave before they drink it. Oh, yeah, of uh, course. It's got to be, like, warm Yeah, body it's got to be, like, body temperature. Yeah, oh, okay. you don't want cold blood. No. I would kind of, like, uh, we were talking about this a little bit, and, like, uh, what we do in the shadows, how they have the night out where they, like, uh, they suck on the blood of people who have been drinking and partying and shit. <laughs> it's such a good episode. Oh, my God. You got, like, this big-ass Nosferatu-looking guy just going out there. It's like, I would like to drink uh, drunk guy blood. That'd be fun, though. Like, is, there's not, like, a bar like that in True Blood, is there? So, there is, and I can't believe I didn't, uh, right in the trashy aisle, too, there is Fangtasia. <laughs> so, according to Eric... You gotta give him props on the No, table. according to Eric Northam, like, vampire, they're all really old, and, like, puns are one of the oldest kinds of jokes that have ever existed. Of course. So, it, the bar's called Fangtasia, and it's it's a seedy red leather black like it's like um go-go dancers kind of nude mm. like it, it's a seedy place but it's a vamp bar so it's where people can go and is that where they have like the real blood or is it still true blood there i mean they have true blood there but like people pe- vampires are absolutely feeding on people in this bar oh, yeah, and, and some a lot shit. of it is consensual as well it, it, it gets really complicated but Fair it's enough. it's like a it's like a sex bar i would say for vampires and humans. Nice. 
I kind of had like a lump category, so I'm going to include in a couple of bars. Uh, the big thing that comes to mind when I think of like a really trashy bar is something like Moe's Tavern. Yes. From The Simpsons. But then I also realized if I do that, I also got to lump in the Drunken Clam and like whatever the mm -hmm. Cleveland show had. Uh, yeah. Mine, honestly, isn't exactly like a trashy bar. It's the um, Cal Calhoun's Cantina from Star Wars. You would consider that trashy? No. I, I'm just going to throw it into that category because it's not exactly classy. Is that the one from, like, The Star Return Wars. of the Jedi? No, that's the one from the 1977 Star Wars. Um, New Hope. Yeah, Star Wars A New Hope. Where Is they it first... where they... I don't want to sing the song, actually. No, you know the song. Yeah, everyone knows. We'll it's... play the song right here. It's where they meet uh, Han Solo for the first time. <laughs> that bar looks pretty shitty. It was like, it was pretty shitty. I wouldn't want to go there. It's full and of, it's filled it's, with aliens? It's full of dangerous people. You're in, this is the 1970s, and this is their like idea of like a futuristic kick-ass bar in the But it's on the Tatooine. Oh, I Tatooine disagree. Shit. I think they made it look shitty on purpose. Yeah. Isn't it looks there really even, cool. Yeah, Tatooine's no. not nice. Tatooine sucks. That's the whole point of Tatooine. Yeah, the yeah. bar's on Tatooine. There's not going to be just like immaculate bars on Tatooine. Isn't no. there even like the big drunk guy is just like, ah, oh, my friend doesn't like you. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he gets sliced. <laughs> Did you guys see that episode of Robot Chicken where they wrote a backstory for that guy that gets his um, arm cut off? Yeah, And he was actually going to get a promotion and he was an architect and then he <laughs> went in to have a beer to celebrate it and got his arm cut off. And the whole off. time he's trying to explain like, no, my friend's really drunk, but it's like, oh, you're speaking an alien language. Slice. Yeah, yeah. God. Love Robot Chicken. Robot Chicken Star Wars stuff is so good. And the guys who did Robot Chicken were fantastic. But no, that's that's my mention. Is um, Calhoun's Cantina. Mm -hmm. Alibi Room, totally shitty from Shameless. Oh my god, of course it is. That's the ultimate shithole. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, super divey. If you got people like Frank in there, then like you know it's fucked up. Yeah. They have like the day drinkers. I think like that's where they make their money from, the day drinkers. Well, they wouldn't know if they make money. Didn't they, like, fuck up their booking for years? I think so. Isn't it? What? It's been a while since I've watched Shameless. Wasn't it also a thing where it's, like, the guy who owned it, like, the old guy who owned it before Kevin and Dee did, was, like, this old man, and they just said, okay, now just say the most racist thing ever. <laughs> we know exactly what show we are. You can get away with anything. Yep. God, what? And he lived upstairs above the bar. Uh-huh. And Kevin took care of him. Yeah. Why? I, I don't know. I don't think he ever did. I don't know. He was in the foster <laughs> these people system. Maybe aren't, he just didn't have a dad. These, like, these characters uh, lived very different lives from all yeah. of us. I know a lot of people call a shameless the show that's, like, poverty porn. But, like, it kind of is. It kind of is, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can give it a criticism like that, but that's totally what it is. Also, it's like, I think Alibi Room is like, everyone's been to a bar like that where it's like, Lights sure. are low, very sticky. They're always out of, like, two or three main things. Mm -hmm. All the beer is probably, like, you know... Skunky, Coors, you've been sitting there for a bit. Skunked, warm, and just, like, your usual, like, Coors Light shit. Yeah. I'd still go drink there. Once or twice, maybe. Yeah. Any other shitty bars that we can think of? You said Most Tavern did, already, I right? Did, I did say Most Tavern. And while I'm on the subject of that, I do think, like... Whatever it is, I really kind of want the beer there. Because, like, whatever Pawtucket Patriot Ale or whatever they drink in Family oh, Guy, yeah. that's probably just, like, Sam Adams, right? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't there even, like, there was, remember, like, the the Family Guy Simpsons crossover? Vaguely. No. I, one, of the, one of the big points that got Homer Simpson and Peter Griffin into a big fight was the fact that Duff Beer and the Pawtucket Patriot was actually the same recipe. That's hilarious. What? And Hold the, on a minute. I'm still wrapping my head around the fact that there was a crossover. Yeah. And the big joke was that, like, oh, this is just a knockoff of this thing with similar flavor and yeah. characters. And while they're doing that, they're just, like, panning across, like, all the copy and paste, like, <laughs> Family Guy to Simpson characters. <laughs> That's great. Oh, my God. It's just really smarter of them to do that. Like, they got the both of the mayors together. They got... Adam, Ad, Elijah, Adam. Adam West is the mayor there. They got uh, two Elijah Woods, both in Simpson and uh, the guy together. <laughs> That's oh my god, great. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's fun. 
I don't watch too much Family Guy anymore, but like... I don't either. When I was younger, I thought it was great. I still laugh at it sometimes, but I just don't really watch it. They got weird. They both got weird. Although I will say... I, I, I don't watch New Simpsons if either. If you need, like, something that's just like the perfect white noise, just like Simpsons, always. Just put that Agreed. on. Agreed. And it's just, it just sounds like TV. <laughs> You know what I mean. Hmm. <laughs> 22 minutes, get the same song over again. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Any more trashy bars? Any more that we could think of? Oh, I could think of one. What? I was thinking about like a, I was thinking about like a, something that embodies like a saloon. Like oh. an old western saloon. The only thing I could really think of, because I'm sure shows like Deadwood probably have something like that. Yeah, I've never but really watched Deadwood. I was also thinking about uh, Back to the Future 3. The oh, thir- the you know thir- how I feel about that. The third movie. best Back to the Future movie. By default. And like, it's just like, whatever, saloon. But then there's that, like, that one scene where the bartender's like, oh, he's, he's out cold. We gotta make some wake-up juice. You guys... <laughs> Ever watch a movie called A Million Ways to Die in the West? Oh, Speaking with the, Seth, the Seth MacFarlane, MacFarlane one. Yeah. yeah. What was the name of the saloon that they went to? Because yeah. that was pretty shitty. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, like, same thing. Yeah, pretty it's, much. Saloons, I think, in general, were supposed to be trashy, but at the same time, like, you're going to run into some, like, badass guy there. Like, I think, like, the the cantina, you could call it, was, like, a saloon. Yeah. Yeah. Assuming like that, like, futuristic. everything has, like, a Western influence in Star Wars. Space Western. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so should we move on to the beyond? The beyond. beyond. The bed, bath, and beyond. <laughs> yes. Of all. Korova Milk Bar mm-hmm. from A Clockwork Orange. Yeah, that's that's as out there as it gets. It's super fucking out there, but, like, why do you kind of want to hang out there, though? I have the scene. I don't know. know. It, that, like, There's no other bar like it. It's not, they don't even serve alcohol there. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, the Corova Milk Bar is um, a bar in the mm-hmm. universe of the Clockwork Clock of Orange where Alex and his gang hang out and drink legal drug laced <gasps> milk yeah. before they go out and commit crimes and rapes. And I don't think they murder anybody, but they might as well have. I, I wouldn't <laughs> put it past them. No, I, I don't think they, I mean, like, would. they beat up a homeless guy in one scene. I wouldn't put it past them. No, like, they're, they're truly awful people, and that's how, where they go to get all jacked up. Yep. Before how, they go out a crime and... How bad is this movie? Oh, they're quite despicable. They're, they're extremely despicable. And then, like, all the furniture, too, is weird. It's, like, not even furniture. I, it, I, I don't know if... Uh, Stanley Cooper's trying to play it off as like this is furniture or these are people. I mean, either way it works. Yeah, it's just like a a lady like bent over. To the be, only like, reason I'm gonna say is he intended for them to be portrayed as actual furniture is because the statues of women around them like actually you know you can get your milk from their breast. There's a lot of different kinds of milk too. Lots of different drugs in it. Look, I didn't come up with the concept. I'm just saying, like. No, you're not shit. the mad man no, who came no. up. The with production this. design is top notch. Yeah. For the f- movie and themes that it seems to, from what I'm gathering, like, it, it fits. Mm-hmm. It fits within the movie's theme. Why is it always weird to see someone drink milk in a movie? Like the only other example I could think of is Inglorious Bastards, where the Nazi. Jew it works hunter. there though, because that's a dairy farm. Yeah, but at the same time, the way he just sucks that milk down is just like I do not. It's because trust like anything. adult hum- humans shouldn't be drinking cow's milk or any other animal's milk. It's not heavily like publicized that adults drink milk. Like we push kids to drink milk growing right. up. That's from like, like. Uh, milk government propaganda because they yeah. all the this old pasteurized and campaign. yeah skim milk that they had to get people to buy so cereal it's part of a balanced breakfast yada 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 literally nobody says that anybody has to have milk and it doesn't do shit for your bones uh, no I just no, feel it really like doesn't. milk in media is always just like you are gonna be like how do we make this guy look like the ultimate sociopath like ah just give him a glass of milk I've got a really odd one and it's more of like i guess a drug or opium den but yeah. it's featured pretty heavily in um one that we uh, in a your favorite series my favorite series that we keep mentioning mm-hmm. Percy jackson and the lightning thief has the the book and the movies has this scene where they go to what's called the lotus casino and right. hotel and basically it's going off of like the myth where if like you eat like 
I guess the nymphs always eat, like this specific type of nymph always eats these lotus flowers and get basically high as hell. Mm -hmm. Cool. And mm -hmm. if you go into this, in the movie and in the book, yeah, you go into the lotus hotel and it has like arcade, it's got casino games, it's mm -hmm. got like slot machines and in the a whole movie bunch of, there's like, like the ladies with the big hors d'oeuvre trays with yeah, all these little yeah and that's things. yeah and that's the portrayed in the books as well and um if you eat one of the lotuses mm -hmm. you basically go on like i, I guess like just you, you on, like, you're on a bender you're, you're on, on a, a bender, bender where you forget like everything mm -hmm. around you and what time is yeah no like time literally does not exist i you remember this from there, the movie like, i don't know if it was in the book probably it, it was Probably was the book, where it's yeah. the guy who was just like, oh, yeah, I've been here since 1980 or whatever. The moment is where he's like, Percy goes up to this guy, he's playing an arcade game based off of, like, some film. And the like, guy. Oh, looks, I remember having that on VHS, you know, like what people usually say. Well, he's like, oh, yeah, this movie was, like, the best in blah, blah, blah year. And Percy has a moment of, it's not, like, 1970, it's 2000 and whatever. Yeah. And he goes, okay, I need to leave now. And if you try to leave, the... Um, that would be the, like more orders? Yeah, you want to... More you Lotus? Want? Here, have a card. Play more games. Mm -hmm. And he has to fight his two companions, basically like dragging them by their hair to get them out. Yeah. And they lost two It's days. a great metaphor for like how casinos in general just kind of pry on addictions mm -hmm. like alcoholism and gambling addictions yeah the way that casinos are set up as well it's like kind of in a curvature so when you i mean they do it in, in grocery stores too yeah they do if it you're gonna psychologically break down everything like every experience you have in a like advertised world is curated yeah but like yeah, it's like even though curated. no one's hands are clean on the situation it's like these people are like literally like handing out drugs to everybody yeah well, yeah, in, in this casino, like... I mean, like, you could probably say the same thing about, like, if someone... How, like, casinos are, like, you can drink for free, but mm -hmm. they expect you to lose all your money anyways. Yeah. Yeah, we all make choices. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 like, seriously, we all make choices. Life's yeah. a bitch and then you die. No, so, like, yeah, I mean, like, you make... We all make choices. make choices. Yeah, you make choices. I, like, I, I don't expect a business to be responsible for my decisions. No. And that's a slippery fucking slope right there. Is there anything else really, like, supernatural about that place, other than, the like, the nymphs? I mean, you can be there for an hour and lose two days. Like, the way that time flows there yeah. is incredibly it's like weird. like Inception. Kind of. Where it's like, people spend their, like, 70 plus years trapped in there and never fucking know it. Do they mm -hmm. age? No. Yeah. That That's, like, kinda, the other crazy part cool. of it. That's pretty fucking cool. That's the same thing that happened to Nico, right? I could Nico, make right? with it if I yeah, left. Yeah, Nico and his sister were trapped in, like, 70 years. They went into the casino just before World War II happened and mm -hmm. came out in the mid-2000s. But they were still kids. They were still kids. Nico was still 10. Bianca, I think, was, like, 14. Fuck. Yeah. They, they didn't age. Sounds fun. Good for them. It sounds terrifying. <laughs> it sounds exciting. I feel like if you're But in, I would totally go. If you know what's up, it sounds fun. You know what? If I could, like, come out ten years later, that'd be great. Ten? Yeah. Ten. Uh, no. <laughs> Jess is like, I'm not Everyone listening. would have to die. You come out. What? Like, <laughs> everyone's dead. There's flying cars. You know what? You're like, my time has come. <laughs> yeah, man. All the machines run on potatoes or something like that. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, oh, we yes. have, like, we could take Back casual... to the casino now. We, we can yeah, take I gotta go back in. This isn't my vibe. <laughs> Nothing out here makes sense anymore. No, I can't All do it. All that makes sense to me is the casino. I want to eat the yeah, leaves. Really? <laughs> Any other out there? I know we talked about the Rick and Morty bar off screen. Oh, Blitz and Shits. Blitz and Shits is probably the most the out there bar, bar arcade. arcade. Yeah. Kind of on the same level as the, the Lotus the Flowers. Lotus? There's the fucking Roy game. Oh my god. Yeah. They play it off as a joke, but it's just, in classic Rick and Morty fashion, it's such a weird joke that gets way too personal and too mindfucky. <laughs> Where it's like, it's a whole it's video game of just living uh, Earth human life. As Roy, he's a uh, college football star. At least in Morty's game. In Morty's game he was, yeah. Rick took him off the grid. Yeah, Rick was just like, oh shit, I'm... He's I... burning his driver's license. <laughs> it's going off the grid. It's fucked up. 
And then he comes back and he just doesn't remember things. It's like, who are you? Where's yeah, my wife? Yeah, it's like those stories you hear about people either being in coma, like being in comas and like yeah. having actual marriages and relationships and children. And like, up. what's that Japanese folk tale about the guy who comes back from a journey and a hundred years had passed? Oh, no idea. Um, you kind of know what I mean, right? I kind of know, yeah. Whatever. Blitz and shit would be fun. Just like a bunch of aliens playing games and shit. Yeah, it would be fun. It would be weird. It would be creepy, but I feel like there'd be enough beer to make me cool with it. Yeah. You want to know something that's real fucked up? Mm. You've seen The Boys, right? Of course. No. Uh, there is one, I wouldn't even really call it a bar. It was more like a orgy den. I think it is they probably, technically a they bar. They probably have a bar in there. But it's the only place that a lot of these superheroes are away from the public eye so they can kind of be debaucherous. Yeah, it's like a bunch of people with different superpowers just fucking like each other and learning stuff. Learning to fuck in different ways. It's like, pretty cool. They do We've it all had that thought. <laughs> I mean, like, if nothing else, you think about, like, how every superhero really, like, everything is different for them, and that means everything. And even if you have that, like, right in the back of your head, you still think, like, huh. wonder if, like, uh, Mr. Fantastic ever just, like, extends his schlong out. He would. Or, like, you think of Ant-Man. Yeah, like, what can Ant-Man do? There actually (laughs) literally is a guy who just, like, he has the power to shrink, and he just, you know, just dives on in on a woman. I mean, wasn't there a film theory a while ago, or, like, a fan theory about Oh, yeah, with Ant-Man going up Thanos' booty hole? Yeah. That would work. I'm just saying. No, it could have. I will never know. But <laughs> it really well, could have. I think that was like Man, that needs to be the next what if episode. If I was they about have to say balls, that was a meme about that. It. Where it's just like uh, Ant Man looking up at the booty cheeks and just like a little Marvel what if. Man, they should. They would have. Or that stop frame where it's like to be continued. Yeah, they would destroyed that guy. Are you kidding me? You'd go from Ant Man to Giant Man within a man's cheeks. You dead. <laughs> Can't unsnap that. I don't know. Some, maybe somehow Thanos would not live, like, would live. Like you should have gone for the head. Yeah. Yeah, well, just decapitate the bastard and be done. Yeah. Have you also seen, like, the, the big plot hole where they show Doctor Strange opening up a portal yeah, and it what? cuts up that one, and it cuts off what? a dude's arm. Dude, that with his head. Or his arm that he uses for the fucking glove Gauntlet, that yeah. destroys everything. Oh, but he didn't think of it. Bullshit. Yeah, he's what a if? doctor. What, what he's if? one of the smartest what people if? on this planet. What if? Look, ultimately, <laughs> fucking Chris Pratt's character, I can't remember his name. What's his name? Star Lord. Star Lord. Yeah, Star Lord should have just, like, fucking calmed the fuck down for two minutes and it would have been over with. Yeah, it really would have. Thanks, Star Lord. It's ultimately his fault. It really is, actually. The gauntlet was literally coming off the fingers. It's not even like, oh, they might have done it. No, like, it would have happened. But, I, yes, but it is within his character. Here's the thing, though. Why didn't Stark or anyone steal the ge- like the stones earlier? Because if they he can't could really be- handle the stones. Well, yeah, I mean, no. Remember that chick that tried yeah. to grab the stones and she got dusted? Yeah, but I mean... I mean, that's kind of what killed Tony Stark, too, using yeah, all the stones. Yeah, but he yeah, they won a couple of weeks. But it's like he still had a gauntlet on. He could have been like, oh, ha ha. He is a this. giant purple monster man. He's a pi- giant purple grape, sure, but like. Dude. Even when he used the stones, it like, it made him all, you know. Yeah. Limpy. Limpy. He was, he was weak afterwards. Hulk used it, and he's, you know, not great afterwards. Yeah, that was a while for Dr. Banner to be, to recover, I know. Um, mm. But like, bruh, just. Yeah, but they had containers for the stones why not just like or even make like a stone destroyer grinder thing that we saw in what if but only the stones can 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 kill each other or some shit like that whatever back to superhero sex (laughs) den uh sign me up no thanks i'd watch in the corner yeah yeah in the corner i don't know if i'd want to participate who's to say who's to say that's probably not frowned upon there no. If you can use any any ability, I mean, they're all watching each other. Yeah. If you can use whatever possible ability you have to get your rocks off, there's probably nothing wrong with just you know being in the corner. Yeah. Get some astroglide. Why not? Oh yeah, my yeah. gosh! They're back. 
got the brand recognition, the we placement br- they could have done. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't talked about Astroglide in a while. No, no, we haven't. They gave us some, some free stuff. And yeah, and they're a wonderful company it. with a wonderful product. Yeah. <laughs> What's your superpower? Astroglide. Yeah. But up, up. What else is out there? What's another out there bar? Um. Oh, what about the bar in um the Fallout? There's, there's a couple. So many. Yeah, there's like a couple dens, right? In Fallout. Right. You you've seen like the Nuka Cola Quantum, right? Yeah. yeah. Where it's just like it glowing. It definitely blue. tastes like blue raspberry. Though, oh, I right? just know for a fact if I drank that, I wouldn't be mentally ill anymore. <laughs> Maybe, I would probably just piss a neon. Yeah. Um, I've would- always been a much bigger fan of the uh, Sunset Sarsaparilla because that is a local beverage to the Mojave where Fallout New Vegas takes place. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? Sunset Sarsaparilla. Yeah, really big fan of it. It's not, it's not in any of, of the other games, just in uh, the Mojave. Hmm. I fucking what other, love Fallout. Like, what are the like, fictional like drinks are there you think that like would be good? We talked about the uh, Mokova. Yeah, Mokova. I talked about like a uh, Duff and all oh, that stuff. Oh, Skuma. 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 There's yeah. a, and you want to know what? Let's add the Raggard flag into our list Ragged too. Raggard flag home of the thieves guild. Yeah. Yeah. Let's add the Raggard flag. I'm sure into they there. know how to party. Come on. Yeah. They do know how to party. And it's another speakeasy. I, although, like, I would put that in the trashy category because oh, for they, sure, it's literally in the sewer. What? It's a bar in the sewer. Yeah. They would, they would not pass health inspection any day of the week. No. They could bleach that whole place down and still get an F. But you can also get uh, plastic surgery there really quickly, though, too. So Again, not a sanitary environment. <laughs> no. It is near water, though, but it looks like stagnant water. Sewage oh, yeah. water, you, maybe. You, if you drink that water, you're getting every parasite in the book. <sighs> I'm trying to think of like other cool bars in Skyrim. There's always, like, some sort of inn or whatever. Yeah, there's inns yeah, in every pubs. place. But, like, the Ragged Flagons, like, specifically just, like, a bar for the Thieves' Guild. What's that one in Riverwood where uh, Delphine kind of gives you the business? It's very generic. It's the like only, like, one. quest line in Riverwood, if I'm not mistaken. You're talking about the, the first town you go to. Yeah. Where uh, if you kill the chicken, everyone kills you. Yeah, no, I never... I, I never... I never... Yeah... So that's just like a general store, and then the other one's an inn. And there's a bunch of meteries around yeah. Skyrim. Too. Oh yeah, there is a meadery. So there's a meadery on the way to White Run, mm-hmm. right there, and then all the bees are in Riften too. There's I haven't had good Riften. mead like ever. I think like if I went to like, <laughs> I've had you know some good I mean, mead, mead. I've had by, like, like fancy schmancy, fruited up. Bee nectar is good. Bee nectar does some good mead. But like, I want like that like. Real Ren Fair style mead, you know. I'm sure you get fucked up. I, 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 the only kind of mead that I actually really enjoy that I will buy are like uh, the apple pie meads during the winter, mm. or even a sizer. But I don't know. A lot of mead just tastes like Robitussin to me. Yeah, I, I mean, like, and maybe just because it's the nature like, of the beast. Probably just because I'm not like a sweet tooth guy either. I. It is fermented honey. Yeah. I have like a massive sweet tooth, and I don't really enjoy that much meat to be honest although i do make tapache yeah you do it's just fermented pineapple which is sweet yeah but that's more like it gets funky well it's a fruit sweet it's not honey sweet well i mean like i also put in like a bunch of brown sugar so you can't really say that pineapples are pretty sweet though too exactly their sugar content yeah um snake hole lounge Oh yeah, with the the, the the fucking snake juice. Yeah, snake hole lounge, snake what did, juice. What did they say it was? Or it was just like every alcohol all together and it got everyone immediately fucked up. I don't remember. I just remember that and like Ron Swanson trying it for the first time. And he's like, That's an excellent beverage and then just dances. Yep. <laughs> and then they had to tie Jerry to the roof of the car because they there all wasn't any fit. room. Yeah. <laughs> What, uh, a, what about how, like, Jerry's real name is Gary? And <laughs> oh, dude. I, I, I that show talk. is so fucking good. It's so good. Everyone it's, likes to remember how good The Office is, but yeah. really, Parks and Rec was way better. I was going to say, debatably, better. It is better. Mm-hmm. It is better. First season kind of sucks. and I don't know I, Every first anymore. season of everything kind of sucks. Yeah. Oh, you know what else? Except it's for not, Arrested Development. That's true. 
it's not like an alcoholic beverage, but slurm. It slurm. might as well be an alcohol be- beverage. It's like space slug ass juice. Yeah, it's like sold as like this big Sprite competitor in the year 3000 and whatever. But really, it just comes from a big worm hiney. Yeah. There's worse things in the world. I don't know. Like they, I would like, probably still drink it. I would have a similar reaction to Fryer where it's like, ugh, and then just start drinking it. I think it they again. even make the, like, the, the argument of like, oh, well, honey just comes from bee shit. You no, know, it does. Yeah. I don't know. You, uh, they use so much nasty stuff to make food look appealing to I us. I think the big joke of that is the fact that like a lot of these sodas really are just a bunch of chemicals and acids and shit and just trying to put as much sugar in you as possible. But we know that and we still enjoy them. Yeah, and there is a legal number of, like, what, rat droppings and, like, mouse hair that can be in your food per the um, have I mentioned FDA. On, have I mentioned here how, like, there was the court case where someone found out a rat in their Mountain Dew and the argument that, the argument was uh, there's no way that could have been possible. A rat would have melted in this Mountain Dew. It's true, though. Yeah. It would be like a, a rat sitting in stomach acid inside of, like, a pressurized can. It makes no sense. I don't... Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. People are stupid. People are stupid. People are stupid. Don't drink soda. Drink whiskey. Yeah. That's good for you. <laughs> it's all bad for you. Everything's bad. The amount of stuff you inhale just walking down a street, they're just like, don't worry about it anymore. Yeah. Just really don't. Don't be all holier than thou for other people to hate that shit so much. Any other bars? Uh, Not really. No. I can't think of anything. What if you had your own bar? I would never. You would never? Absolutely not. But like, what if you were to pitch a bar? Oh, okay, cool. That's better. I don't want to own it. I don't want to be like... Yeah, no. Down. You just get to put your idea out there. Yeah, someone... Make if, everyone if someone else wants to pay me it. to run their bar, that's great. But I would absolutely <laughs> never own my own fucking bar or restaurant. I kind of had a fun idea. Oh, what? Well, oh, yeah. I got really into the idea of speakeasies and Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Yes. And for a fact, my favorite Harry Potter movie is Goblet of Fire. Okay. Yeah. So I had the idea, what if I had a speakeasy that was like all super high fantasy wizard shit, but the way to get there, there's a little antique shop in the middle of America. (laughs) Let's say Nebraska or something. Just porky there. Yeah, exactly. One item... Of all, of like the big mess of antiques is a port key. That's cool. Or an item that you pick up or touch and it immediately transports you to my bar. Yeah, are you going to leave these port keys all over the place? Or? One shop, one specific item. So can you port key to the shop then? Like, you think like, oh, take me to this location and it will take people to that shop. No. No. I, I think, like, exclusively... It's not a good business, business model, but it seems fun. Yeah, it no, like... It would be fun. I mean, compared to, like, other speakeasies where it's, like, you know, go here, know the password, yada, yada. Wizard is just like, oh, yeah, just go here, touch the... I don't know, uh... What's a fucking antique? Touch this old-ass lamp. Yeah. And it takes you to the lampshade speakeasy. I like the name a lot, though. Yeah, I just came up with it now. It's really good. Um... If honestly, if I were to have any creative influence over or even unfortunately own a bar, um, I would, I, I think you guys know me pretty well. I would keep it simple and there'd be a fuck ton of beer on draft, lots of outdoor seating and fire pits. Like, yeah. But like, I wouldn't put that much more thought into it. It would be filled. But if, what if... But what if what... I'm just trying to think of how you can make have a little bit of fun with it. Like, how do you how do you make it more magical? Do you want it magical? You can smoke outside. <laughs> there, that's magical. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere is a smoking section, and no one's going to give you looks. Nope. You and you have nice warm fires to sit by. Sounds very cozy. Yeah, but like the inside's a total dive bar, beer garden scenario. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Do There's you? not food, though. We do food trucks, so mm-hmm. you can bring your dog inside. Oh, fuck shit. yes. That, that's awesome. Yeah, we're not dealing with food. I was also thinking place. about, like, I knew this didn't really count, but I was thinking about, like, a barcade that's all VR. They have VR cafes places. They have VR cafes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking also about, like, uh, the 
club from Ready Player One. I was oh about to say yeah that you yeah mean, like Ready Player One style. Okay. Like what? How how would that be for a bar? Like it looks very divey and trashy, and then you actually like log in, and then like there's the bar, the real bar. Yeah, I like the that a lot. Bar. I like mm. that a lot. I don't know. For me, take like the setup. So like the the setup and the design of the cantina from Star Wars. Take that, but add like an outside patio area with a big like bonfire place, like just like a hearth. Would you still want it on like Tatooine or like? Yeah, just anywhere. And yeah. Put it on a tropical island. Oh, I specifically want my bar. In, like, a suburban strip mall, so there's plenty of parking for any everybody, and no one has to be like, where the fuck am I gonna park? Like, where am I gonna... Like, it, it, I got that so fucking much when I worked at, like, a place downtown. No, like, fuck that. I don't... Oh, I would never want a bar downtown. We're in the... Like, we're next to a Starbucks and a Food Lion, or yeah. a Harris Teeter, or whatever. When I was hosting at a restaurant in downtown Greensboro, like, all the, uh, all the phone calls I had to manage were, do you take reservations, or where can I park? And... <laughs> The where can I park thing is super fair. Well, where can I park on, like, downtown area for a guy who doesn't have a car? I'm just going to say the same thing. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there should be a garage around here. Um, I can pull up my Google for you. and then There even was a garage. <laughs> and I'm just going to name it now. It's like, right around the corner from us was the Green Street parking deck. <laughs> and... Uh, and he still wanted, didn't tell anyone about it. No, I still told him about it. It's like, oh yeah, there's the Green Street parking deck around there. Where is that? Green Street. <laughs> I don't fucking no. Green Street. I don't know. So take take like the cantina, add an outside section, mm-hmm. with, like a big uh, hearth, I guess. Keep all the aliens. Keep, no. Yes. I said the layout. All right. I, I said the layout. Put it on like a fucking job. Switch out the aliens music. for strippers. Keep, keep the same the, music. The keep same the music. song over and over again. Play it again. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, Just that one song. But all the managers have to wear like blue body suits. Yeah. <laughs> do you serve the blue milk there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do we just? <laughs> Brody, are you going to show up when you go to like fucking Star Wars World? <laughs> and like, um, I, do you have the blue milk here? I want the blue milk. Yeah. I don't want this milk with some blue coloring bullshit. I, I want, want the... the blue milk right from the blue titty. Yes. Well, okay. And then, like, add a second up, like, an upstairs area where you can do, like, casino shit. Like, just have board games or... Space casino? Yeah. I went to a really cool jazz club in um, Charleston that the lower level was, like, a 1990s super wood bar you know like shit everywhere but like really classy Mm -hmm. and there was booth seating and then you go upstairs and you kind of weave on like a like another balcony or the roof and you go up to the top and there's a bunch of seating areas up on the roof and you can like look at the ocean oh nice and it's a yaz bar though too so there's yazin going around yeah Yeah. yazin oh yeah, jazz it, jazz. Do you know that jazz in Star Wars is called jizz? <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm not fucking around. No, he's that's not. A, that's a thing. Oh, God. That's a fun fact. No, just put, yeah. not even, like, space casino. Just put, like, a casino upstairs. I think that would be cool. Hmm. Or maybe put the casino... It seems complicated. <laughs> now, are you talking about, like, the bar at Twin Peaks? <laughs> that had a casino in it. Okay. No. I forgot that there was a bar God, in Twin Peaks. I just no. remember there was a diner. There's a bar eventually. Okay. Eventually. In the red room or like yeah, in not, the real Not world? the red room in the real world. Okay. We'll look it up after. I you know to, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I need to watch the new one again. Do we have any more honorable mentions? What's the... I know we've been talking about a lot. Oh, the bar this. from the new girl. New girl, uh, yeah. yeah new girl. That's Nick a Lawrence. good bar. What's the what's the actual casino from Casino Royale? Oh, oh, oh the Royale. Um, oh, that is the Royale. I have no idea. Ah. No, you're talking about 007, right? Yep. Are you talking about the remake or the original? Either. Uh, either one. The one where he gives the very specific martini order. It's probably super obscure. Probably doesn't matter too much. He's always in a casino. I feel like. No, it's kind of his one. jam. No, no, no. Can we agree though that like. If we wanted to go on a pub crawl, we would start with Patty's Pub. Oh, I would end there. 
Like, it would end there? Yeah. You ended at the weirdest place. All right. You disagree? I've, I haven't done enough pub crawls to really plan things out too well. But I feel like if... I just think, like, Patty's Pub is just like, you just walk in, no one's there because they're up to some sort of scam, and then you just pour yourself a beer. Or a monkey pours you a beer. I don't know. I feel some, like you just want to steal beer, which is fine. I Well, what's wrong with stealing beer? Nothing. Nothing. No. I pay taxes. On this beer. I used to know the name of that casino that they went to and used. Um, I don't remember anymore, and I'm not going to find it. Whatever. Anything else you guys want to add for today? No. Not really. I don't know. If you have any better bar recommendations from fiction, you can always write to us at onefreemoff at gmail.com. That's onefreemoff at gmail.com. Like, uh, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe, you know, like everyone else does on <laughs> YouTube. Or just, you know, hit us up. Whatever. We don't care. We're yeah. on social media. We're really chill. We're on social. Just, uh, you yeah, know, say hi. We care. Just show Do that we? you care. It would mean a lot. It really would. The first few times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> After, like... How many, how much how much text do you get before it starts getting annoying? I don't know. I don't really get annoyed that easily. You? Yeah. I can push that limit. Is that a challenge, Rody? You're you're friends with us. <laughs> we can definitely annoy you. No, no, I really don't get annoyed that easily. You wanna know the most annoying sound in the world? What? I can't do it. What? You can't cut that out. You can't uh, leave it whatever, in. fuck it. Just put in the real sound right here. Oh, What's yeah. the sound? Oh, you haven't seen Dumb and Dumber? No. Oh, oh there's like shit. one point where he's just like in the middle of silence. It's totally like, improv, too. Yeah. Really? Or it's just like the guys. Too scary. It's oh, of like course. a mob guy's with him or some gangster dude. Oh, and he, and he just goes off and makes a noise. And he's just like being very like angry with the two. It's just like, can we please just stop talking for five minutes? And he's like, hey, you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? And just goes like, I've ah. seen clips. I, I've seen clips of it. Yeah. I thought you were talking about, like, nails on a chalkboard. Ooh, oh, that's also no, that's, bad. like, different. <laughs> styrofoam. Oh. No. Mm, I can't do styrofoam. Why, though? Like, why does styrofoam specifically... It's an extremely unnatural material and sound. Is that it? It's like the uncanny valley of noises. Huh. I was going to say the pitch. Also, it, like, makes, like, my arm hairs tingle. <laughs> yeah. Just styrofoam is weird. It hurts my bones. Yeah. And I can't think of any other sound that does that. Hmm. Mm. Well, uh, thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> maybe this I, sound. Yeah, yeah, maybe this one right here. No.